our next session is a session on everyday tips and hacks, um, making living with Parkinson's easier. So I'd like to invite Tom Polizzi, Heather Kennedy, Jan Grimes, and Marty Acevedo to join us here for this panel discussion. Hi folks, we're waiting for, I think maybe Jan's gonna need some help getting in. Uh, if uh, one of my colleagues could help her un unmute her video or un stop or start her video. Okay. There we go. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are y'all doing? Heather. Hi, Marty. Morning. Welcome. welcome. These are some of our uh, most expert people with Parkinson's who have all sorts of tips and tricks and hacks and ideas on how to make living with Parkinson's just a wee bit easier. And uh, to start off, I wanna let you know that there's no need to take notes for this session. We have come up with, we're, we will record all of the tips and tricks and hacks that you've come up with, and we will share that after the event. So sit back and let's uh, turn this over to our wonderful panel. Who would like to take a start? Well, I guess we should start with the beginning of our day, or for some of us, the, the day has to begin with the preparation from the night before. So um, I guess I'll, I'll start with uh, saying that I always set aside my first dose of L-DOPA on the nightstand so that I can take it and get that first boost so I can get going to take my full dose a little bit later. So that's the beginning. How about the rest of you? Well, that's a, that's a good idea. Great, great way to get started. Because the last thing you want to do is struggle to get to the bathroom, <laughs> to, get to get a glass of water, etc. I so do some, some, a little bit of stretching before I get up, you know, just a little, you know, stretch my legs, go side to side and do, because I have some lower back issues. So that really helps me to not, to get to the bathroom because if I don't stumble when I get out of bed, so I can walk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure we all take safety precautions in the, the shower with, you know, proper flooring and all of that. But when you get out of the shower, I have a terrific thing that I use to help dry my hair. I'm going to show it to you right now. It sits on the bathroom counter and it's it's got a gooseneck and a clamp that holds my hair dryer. Wow. So all I have to do is yeah, I can telescope it up higher or lower and then I just sit underneath it and blow my hair dry. It, it's really great. I'm sure there's some other uses for this as well. Yeah, well, Jan, I, I have great. that problem with, with when you have hair like mine, I don't worry too much about blowing it away. Right? <laughs> I'm more like blowing it away. Yeah. I, when I get up in the That's morning. the short hair. <laughs> for when trap I get up in the morning, one of the first things I do is I, I march. I do marching steps okay. just to get my legs loosened up and similar to stretching out and that type of stuff. A little bit of that, maybe maybe a, you know, a, a forward fold, something along those lines, just to get my body loosened up a little bit. Yeah. Have you ever been in a bathroom away from home without the proper bars and handles? I do travel. I know these are not always the most secure, but they work in an emergency. These are the suction cup handles that you can put on the wall of a you know, bathroom uh, that you're not familiar with. And it has helped me in a few cases get up when I would not- I'm not to the bathroom yet though, Jan. When we first get up, I'm still rolling around in the bed. You're way ahead of me. I just learned so many things from you. Thank you for the tips. I'm going to ask you about that equipment that you showed us later. Okay. But I'm still rolling around in bed back and forth. And uh -huh. I take these giant steps and I picture lines on the floor so that I don't fall uh -huh. to get to the bathroom. Highly recommend doing that roll around so that you can actually use your momentum to hop out of bed by pulling yourself upright and then you can say mm -hmm. score are you wearing no. satin pajamas uh, what's that are you wearing satin pajamas i'm usually not wearing pajamas when this happens so i look really crazy <laughs> or but i think i'm usually alone satin helps me slide around better on the bed oh, okay another tip yeah mm -hmm. thank you yeah flannel on flannel doesn't cut it oh no. <laughs> <Your feet's good. laughs> yeah and none of those um Blankets that are heavy, right. the gravity blankets or whatever, yeah. those are awful. Yeah, yeah I, I can't do those either. 
Yeah, they can be helpful for people with, with restless leg and that type of thing, but they're not for everyone. Um, do you all have trouble getting the fingernail clippers to stay in your hand? Well, yeah. I, yeah, I have so. taken mine and wrapped it with uh, medical bandage tape. Ooh. You're amazing. Well, it just, it helps me gr grip it so my, my hand doesn't slide. Great idea. And I can actually cut my fingernails myself, so. Jan, I'm kind of amazed. Me too. What about you, Tom? Do you have any tips for things like the hygiene in the bathroom stuff? You know, I, when I get up in the morning, I, I usually don't shower first thing. I shower a little bit later on, in, either later in the morning or early afternoon, because in the morning, I'm just not stable enough to trust myself in the shower at this point. And then again, after about an hour, when I'm on good, things are moving along. Then you know, things are moving moving better, and I'm, I'm way. So I go. timing, timing, timing is everything. You know, preparing your the the uh, the night before for your day that's coming. You know, what what am I going to wear? So you know, pre buttoning my shirts to uh, so they're all set to go and wow. uh, things like that. So just yeah, it, it helps. Everything. About, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Heather. I was just going to ask Marty about the bathroom part. I just learned so many things from you, Jan. I'm amazed right now. Yeah. Is there anything I, that you do that helps you get through that part? Yeah, I use an electric toothbrush in the morning. Um, it's easier to, to, to do that, to get that part of the morning going. And I have a little routine that if I vary from that routine, I invariably forget something. So I stick to my plan and um, you know, go to the restroom, put my contacts in, brush my teeth, take my meds, and then shower. And if I don't follow that regimen, then I forget to take my meds or whatever else happens. So mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty pretty good in the morning. And I that that shower first thing in the morning really helps ease of the aches and pains that, from sleeping. Wow. Yeah. Jan, I want to hear what else you've got there. Well, I have quite a few things on the table here that I. I'm not, I'll show you as we go by, but if I have trouble, for example, getting some shoes off the shelf in my closet, mm -hmm. I have this wonderful grab it. Got one. Got one. It's highly just, recommend. I carry it around with me a lot just so I don't have to bend over to pick stuff up off the floor because it's that's difficult for me right now. So, um, yeah, for, for some reason, I used to be taller and I'm no longer <laughs> able to reach the top shelf. So, <laughs> I've lost to get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and I, careful what you stand on too. If you're going to oh, be yeah. doing things like changing light bulbs, don't do it oh. alone like me. Just trust me, the sight gags are not worth it. <laughs> I've got a really bad knee, so I, I have a hard time getting around as it is. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna get on any step ladders or anything. Good. So. Yeah, speaking to the electric toothbrush, I, I typically brush my teeth three times a day now instead of just twice a day like I used to. Because sometimes in the morning, I'm not quite as adept at handling the toothbrush. So I tend to I kind of get, use it to get cleaned up first, so to speak, and then brush heavy or, or more thoroughly a little bit later on in the morning when, I, when I've got the opportunity to, to really well, I, you know, I, take control. I fully endorse what Marty has said about the electric toothbrush. My mm -hmm. old key is great. Yeah. I forgot how to brush without an electric toothbrush. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly a lot more difficult. <laughs> Well, and by the time I get to the kitchen, or can we move to the kitchen? Oh, yeah. Before we do, Jan, I've heard folks talk about taking a tennis ball and putting a slit in the bottom and the top and then putting the toothbrush in so that it's a much, mm -hmm. a much uh, bigger grasp and, and, it, and it's easier to hold your well, electric toothbrush or your other toothbrush. Great idea. And can I mention that Davis has written ladders. Davis, do you mean a bed ladder to pull yourself out of bed? Or do you mean a ladder to get something out of a cupboard? Because I like both of those things. My guess. Oh, and the sorry. water pick. Yes, Anne says guess water pick. This is saying don't get off the, the water pick. Floor. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm prohibited from climbing on ladders. <laughs> but Tom, your oral hygiene is phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that smile. <laughs> Great. Great. But to get up higher, yeah. yeah. That's what kind of ladder. But there is something called a bed ladder, just so you guys know, you fasten it underneath your mattress mm -hmm. or between your, you know, 
your um, box spring, your mattress, and you can actually pull yourself up if you have some trouble getting out of bed yeah. for those really hard days. I've also started using canes and walkers around the house mm -hmm. because I got tired of crawling to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have some dignity even if I was alone. <laughs> um, but I'd like to picture the marks on the floor. Remember, you can trick your brain by standing there and gathering yourself and getting your body mm -hmm. moving. That's why these smoothie rings are so great. I'll show you those in a minute. Mm -hmm. But sort of getting your body moving ahead of time by just standing and looking at your feet yeah. and where your arms are, because your brain doesn't know where they are in space, mm -hmm. then get yourself moving. And that applies to everything, not just the bathroom in the mornings. Yeah, absolutely. That was something I just wanted to mention before we moved on. I just recently got a pair of walking sticks. Excellent. And I'm getting used to them, but I, I feel much more secure walking with them. Otherwise, I am using a walker all the time, but the walking sticks I can use too. And if I, your partner bothers you, you can hit them with them. <laughs> weapons. <laughs> right. So, so you were going to transition to the kitchen. You've gotten up, you've successfully or tried to get dressed and used your hacks. Tell us about your kitchen ideas. Anybody want to start? I uh, you know, I, um, I, I tend to buy uh, yogurt in bulk these days instead of buying the little tubs because it's just it's easier for me to, to get that in and out of the, 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 uh, the pit and peeling stuff off. And it's just making, making that process easier works really good for me. Yeah, who designs those? There's no, there's no tab anymore. Yeah. I end up taking a knife and fighting with everything. <laughs> well, somebody no, in one of the earlier groups, the, the pinching and pulling something apart. Mm -hmm. I mean, as strong as my hands are, I cannot pull like a granola bar package apart. They're, they're harder than ever. But, yeah, anyway. We're not allowed to have uh, sharp knives in our house. <laughs> I, I tend to slice myself. My, um, I, have, um, I um, have a hack for that, Marty. I <laughs> this. Okay. You know what this is? It's a shield. You hold okay. it against your cutting board and your, your vegetables are back here. You hold it and then your knife goes like this while you slice, so you can't get to your fingers. Yeah, another mm -hmm. good idea for that is to buy pre-chopped or diced vegetables Absolutely. at the grocery store because it, you know it's not that much more expensive and it's certainly a lot safer, at least in my house. Right, or, right. Or chain mail gloves. Yeah, <laughs> be a little yeah. heavy. Yeah, um, I like to keep sometimes double sets of utensils. I have an island in the middle of my kitchen and it's really a pain for me to have to walk around the island all the time to get things. So I have a little, you know, picture of utensils by the stove and one by the sink. So they're within one or two steps rather than going all the way around the island. So I also have a sewing kitchen hack. You know how you always have trouble getting to a towel perhaps? Mm -hmm. Well, I make something called a kitchen boa. It's not quite as glamorous as, as a feather boa, but it is, it is a bit of a scarf with towels at the end. Love it. So you can wipe your hands or you can go to the stove and pick up a pot. This is amazing. Do, do, you, have those, do you have those in a, like a light tweed? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. Was no, polka dots. Tom, get the, get the polka dots. I've made dots. a billion of, no, not, but the, in lots of different colors, team colors. Send me your request and I'll make you one. Brilliant. Yeah, I so. get stuck in the corners in my kitchen sometimes where I just freeze. And so like like Heather said, I just do some head talk and talk myself out of it and get moving again. And then moving laterally is a challenge for me, like going across the kitchen. I have a galley type kitchen. So I have to think ahead and plan ahead to get out of that freezing mindset. So. Our agility is affected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really important. Yeah that we remember that we could easily fall if we try mm -hmm. to hurry, Absolutely. especially around the kitchen yep. or the That's bathroom. So Does everybody have mats that you can stand on that are tethered to the floor? Don't buy rugs unless you can tether them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trust me from experience. Yeah. Yes, that's very true. Our kitchen floor, unfortunately, is a brick surface, which is a little bit bumpy. But my mm -hmm. husband has made me something to help me get around the kitchen when I, my legs are tired and I don't want to stand there. I don't know. I'm going to try to help you see this. 
this is free. It is basically the marketplace. A stool, <laughs> a stool that has been put on um, oh, yeah. a, a dolly kind of gizmo. Mm -hmm. I want one. And the seat <laughs> is kind of curved like a saddle almost. Yeah. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can sit on it kind of lengthwise like I'm sitting on a horse and then my feet just paddle around the kitchen. Once we get the floor a little smoother, it'll work better, but it works great. Two of the wheels swivel and two of the wheels stay straight. So perfect. That's my hey Jan, we have to market this. My kitchen pony. <laughs> We're gonna I think that that helps a lot, especially in the in the case of like freezing. Yeah, because I'm always I, I get stuck a lot in the morning and at night when I'm I'm low on, on medications, but um to get beyond the freezing uh steps or get my steps moving again uh what what do you what do you guys use I, I, people use mantras i use a, a, like a reset the reset step where i you know stop calm down then move forward with another marching step something like I that a yeah. specific reset i i i usually i would be with my walker but i put my weight back on my heels because mm -hmm. by then i've usually been up on my toes put my weight on my heels take a deep breath and just say left foot go and then i stay, take a, an intentional big step with my left foot and that usually gets me going but i have an idea for everybody you can put this song on you can tell by the way i walk my walk i'm a woman's man no time to talk or anything with a beat and then you start moving to the beat and pretty soon you're walking out the door it really works i don't know how it works right now you got an earworm too, right, Tom? <laughs> yeah. You're lucky. We uh, we've also been at parties where I, you know, with crowds are bad. They're mm. And so if I would freeze somewhere, I would probably just end up turning around to see who I knew and start talking with them because <laughs> I wasn't going anywhere. So uh, make it make it look like I in intended to stop, you know? Right. Yeah, crowds are tough. Um, that's when I that's when I get really nervous and anxious because I feel like I'm gonna stop just freeze in the middle of the crowd and get trampled. So I yeah. did I make I develop strategies. I do a lot of planning in my head ahead of time and I have plan B and C and D. <laughs> and I just um, figure out ways to avoid the crowds like leaving a basketball game or something we'll go a different way or up some steps and then around and about and we go everywhere early. It's important get to, to avoid that crowd. Yeah. Marty, do you take a cane with you as well? Kevin Kwok says whenever we're in public, and just in case, you can take a folding cane. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tend to freeze moving laterally too. So like going down an aisle of a of a on an auditorium or on a plane, getting to the to the window seats, I always ask for the aisle seat. So then I don't have to move laterally and get frazzled and it, it helps. That's great. Does anybody have difficulty if they're having any dyskinesia, so, you know, sliding around on the chair or in the car or anything like that? Well, um, I do. <laughs> when I play the piano and if I'm sliding around, I need to do this. This is a rubber thing you put underneath your rug mm -hmm. to keep it from sliding. Well, I put it on the piano bench and it keeps my <laughs> behind. On Highly the recommend those everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And in the shower, don't forget to get that mat that, you know, that's mm -hmm. non slip That's right. And with, and since we're talking about how to keep things in place, when I go to a restaurant, I take one of these little, they're like little clothespins, but they're for mm -hmm. sewing instead of straight pins to clip my napkin to my garment, my dress or top, whatever I have. So otherwise I'm always picking it up off the floor and that doesn't look very good. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, when you're eating bigger. lobster, like a bib. <laughs> I don't, I don't, tip, I don't tip it, I don't clip it that high. But <laughs> it's still in my lap. But, <laughs> but I, I think tip for when we're out and about is to get that handicap placard. Um, ask your doctor for a referral for a uh, to fill out the form for you. It, it, it's not a stigma related to it. It's just, it's just common sense, and it helps. And even if you don't need it. You'll get some exercise walking a little bit you know you don't have to walk as far to get to places and um it's easier to get in and out of the car if you're in right. a handicap spot i remember what? when i got mine my doctor said or i said oh just make it temporary he said he looked at his nurse and said no right permanent 
<laughs> yeah, you know, and it helps, like you said, uh, Marty, and not just the, the mobility factor, but getting in and out of the car can be really a challenge. And like the, the cars, the, I had a car before that the door hardly opened wide enough to get in and out. So I need to have those doors wide open and, and you just can't do that in some of the tight spaces in, in suburbia. So it, it's a good thing. The thing about uh, when you, if you're looking for a car or if you're going to be looking for a car, I really look seriously and hard at um, two different ways to get in and out of a car. There's the, the, the fall in and climb out of the low car or the climb in and fall out of like an SUV. And it's easier for me to climb in and fall out of the car, so to speak, than it was for me to get out of a sedan. I, I, you know, grabbing onto the doors, trying to wrestle myself out. So that's just a, 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 something that I looked at. So whenever we went, when we went car shopping, I, I, that's all I looked at was how easy it was to get in and out of the car. That's very important. Yeah. But I also exercise my upper body because I'm kind of scrawny otherwise. And I need, know that I need as much muscle as I can to get myself up and down, up and out of places. Yeah. Right. We weren't doing pull-ups and boxing for vanity. This is survival 101. Exactly. Yeah, um, when you arrive at the Parky Awards and you get out of that limo, I'm going to be watching you. Well, you're, you're getting out of the other side. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Cool. You're, you, you mentioned exercise, your arms and all. Do you all have any hacks to help you through your exercise routines? Oh, yeah. Anger. <laughs> Rage. Disappointment. Um, no, just kidding. Love. Um, yeah. But seriously, it's really easy to get a pull-up bar mm -hmm. or to get something that you can punch that's not human or too hard. You know, the bags are very easy to install now, or you can just put a pillow against the wall and just be and do the light punching. Mm -hmm. Also just basic push-ups, a light set of weights, very accessible stuff. Yep. You can even lean on a chair and do those back of your arms. There's so many different exercises you can do, but definitely go to the experts for that. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of fun, fun exercises to do. Like you just pointed out there, Heather, the, like this, working on your triceps on a bench versus a, or a chair versus a, some kind of a, some piece of equipment along those lines. One of the things that I have that really is very valuable is a, I'm not sure if I say this right, a BOSU ball or BOSU ball, or yep. it's just a, it's sort of a half dome and it's filled with air. And I stand on that for about five to 10 minutes a day or maybe every other day. So it's more, more realistically just to keep my balance good. And it's all, all you do is stand there and you, you stand close to the wall so you don't, don't want to fall, of course, and, and they're hard to fall off of. But just, just concentrating on standing there keeps my legs and my core more strengthened, but it also really helps with my balance. I, I'll notice if I haven't stood on it for a while, my balance starts to go a little south on me. So I run back to the bosun ball and it works great. Yeah, I have a big spray, a little spray ball and a big spray ball, the one that you sit on, um, and that helps mm -hmm. with balance. The other one I, use, I put between my legs and just to exercise my adductors and abductors when I'm on Zoom calls or whatever. And then I have a, a colleague and I developed a program where it's a web-based program for exercise. And we have coaches and it's all on an app because if I'm not held accountable, I won't do it. So mm -hmm. if I, I have to change those red boxes into green boxes every day. That's a real motivator to keep me exercising and doing what I need to do every day. Mm -hmm. And make sure you keep medical scissors around the house too, the kind that you'd cut off a cast with that are rounded mm -hmm. because those are invaluable. Another thing we mentioned before were these great things by Human Gear. These are the uh, you know pill cases that you can open with one hand. They're a heck of a lot easier than opening Mm -hmm. these and they just kind of pop open yep we all have them come in all sizes. All right. they yeah. come in all sizes and shapes and you can just kind of pop them open one hand wow thanks polly <laughs> <laughs> i don't have one of those i've got to get one <laughs> yeah they're great really? i got a million of them all over the house <laughs> jan you've created so many great things what other rooms or um activities can we cover for some hacks to help people get through stuff. Well, try, I don't think any of us should stop traveling if that's something that we enjoy doing. And But there's some things we should think about, again, planning ahead. But and if, but if you're in an airport, ask for that wheelchair. I mean, it'll get you through TSA quickly and it'll get you to the gate and you can get on the board easily um, and early. 
So that's mm -hmm. helpful. And then, and obviously get the TSA pre-check if you can, or the clear. Yes. Available to you. That, that, that helps so much. You bet. And, and boarding a plane earlier, you, know, you can ask for early boarding privilege or have it put into your profile when you travel, because it, it's so much easier to get on a plane when you're not under pressure of a million mm -hmm. people behind you. And especially right. if you're flying like, like Southwest where it's you know, dogs eating dogs trying to get onto the plane. Yeah. So get on, get your luggage put away and you can sit, sit, sit down before the, the mob comes on. So. Right. Check your bags. Um, you don't want to have to be dealing with putting something in an overhead bin. It's that's just, I'm always fearful if I do that, that the bag's going to fall on some guy's head. So, <laughs> not be a good thing. Pack lightly. You know, we always yeah. pack more than we need. Yes. That's mm -hmm. huge. What I, may I show something else that I make for some Please. Simplicity? For people, women, much worse case than we are. But for women who can't open purses with buckles, buttons, zippers, et cetera, I make Japanese knot bags. And a knot so bag is simply, it's simply a bag that has two loops, long, short, no zippers, no buttons, just, just the bag, you know? And then you just put the long through the short, and it's and long handles. It can be a crossbody or it's just a shoulder bag. But um, so they, they, you know, they look like this. I've given away about a hundred of them so far, and the ladies just love them. So anyway, Japanese knot bag. It's not my invention, but I do make them. So I was just writing bags and containers that are stiff that stay open while we're filling them and while we're getting yeah. things out are invaluable. It's in it, you know, sometimes things get lost because it's black inside the bag or something. Right. You can't see what's in there. It's like Oscar the Grouch's can. What are we going to pull out next? A fire engine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Does anybody have a solution for when you go into the grocery store and you always forget to bring the bags that you have in your car? Anybody? <laughs> I always forget. I don't, I don't understand that. I'm just wondering if anyone had a hack for that. <laughs> I have found that the baskets they have at the front of the store, you know, with the little two wire mm -hmm. handles, mm -hmm. that fits perfectly on my walker. Oh. It goes right down between the handles onto the seat. And so that becomes my grocery cart. Perfect. So, and for those of us without a walker, Cat Hill made a comment once. I wish I had a t shirt that just says, I'm handicapped or I'm disabled or give me a break or something along the lines of, gosh, slow down people. Everybody mm -hmm. seems to be in such a hurry. There's people pushing on us all the time, yeah. Yeah. you know? And, and I, I think, used to be one of those people. Yeah. Yeah, we have to be patient with ourselves and ask others to be patient with us. Definitely, definitely yeah. the case. What do you guys do for fun? What are your, what are your hacks when you're out having fun? We have fun all day, every day, though, right? Yeah, yeah it, <laughs> it's important to laugh, no yeah. doubt. You have to have a sense of humor, because if you don't... Uh... Well, I one time had a woman ask me if my husband knew that I was out because she thought it was awful that I had Parkinson's and was out by myself. <laughs> she said, does he know you're out? <laughs> you're like, I don't, I don't know. know. He doesn't know a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Keep him guessing, right, Jan? Yeah, well, you know, I feel that it's our duty to try to educate people. And uh, if I can educate somebody once every day, you know, about Parkinson's, just what it's like, I'll feel that I've done, a, done something good. I had a gentleman in the grocery store one time see me shuffling behind my cart. And he said, oh, I'd love to learn to dance like that. And I said, oh, you have to have Parkinson's to dance like this. And then he was, oh, 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 he was all embarrassed. You know, but I said, no, no worries. This is just part of the, part of the deal, you know? So. I wish you lived by me. <laughs> I think we would have a good time. Sometimes I, I come off a little bitter, though, like people will assume that I'm drunk, which <laughs> used to be true on occasion, mm -hmm. right? But now I just say, you know, even if I was, alcoholism is, in a, you know, is a disease as well. You know, but this happens to be a neurologic disease. And so I just kind of pause, like, you know, be kind. You know, we never know. It's best to ask, yeah. but you know, I try to make a joke about it too. Yeah. 
I, I won't even call it a disease anymore because I, I don't want to be ostracized as being sick. You know, I point. call me, say it's a condition and I've got it under control today. Today. Language matters. Good point. I, I, agree. That's very I just, I just Thank you. With Parkinson's in general. I just, I, I totally dropped the word disease. It really doesn't matter. I have Parkinson's yeah. and people know what you're talking about. It's not, not, yeah. not a big secret. So, right. That's right. Good. Right. But, but for exercising, I, I, I've always been quite active. I've been a cyclist for most all my life, not a, not, not a competitive cyclist, but just a, you know, I just ride my bike a lot. But um, some of the things that I did, I, I, I used to use Parkinson's as my excuse to stop doing some of those things. But last year, I decided to change that around and try to talk myself back into doing those things that I enjoy doing so. I, I got back on 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 the two wheel bike because I, I had gone to a recumbent trike and I still love my recumbent trike, but it, it, again, if you have balance issues or if you're trying to ride in an area where uh, there's traffic, for example, I never have to clip out when I'm on my trike, so I can just sit there, pull up to the light, press the button, or just wait for it to turn green and take off again. It works really well, and uh, I, I, I go riding with my friends a lot, and we have a good time, and I can keep up with them. So. You can look at those things and you, they also make e-bike versions or electric fight, electrified versions of e-bikes so, or uh, rather uh, trikes, recumbent trikes. Two wheels up front, one in the back. Well, we have a tandem electric bike because I mm -hmm. can't manage, manage the, all the multitasking that, that it takes to ride a bike. So my husband is in front, I'm a stoker and we go at my pace, which is pretty brisk at times, but it's, it has an electric assist to get through those intersections and up those steeper hills. Can anyone here keep up with Davis Finney? <laughs> Holly maybe? Oh, only when he doesn't have his battery in his bike. <laughs> he put his battery out of his bike the other day. I, I, had, I had to thank him for that. <laughs> I still had a hell of a time trying to keep up. <laughs> Oh. And, well, and Tom, Polly, you're pretty sick. Same thing, Polly. <laughs> yeah. Tom and I have ridden together. It's quite fun. Yeah. yeah. I know, Marty, you've got uh, so many ideas around some of your hobbies, like camping. Mm -hmm. yeah. any, any hacks that you want to share about camping that make it well, easy for you? Yeah. Camping is, is not for everyone. We have a Class B travel van. It looks like a regular van and park on regular parking spots. But one of the cool things about it is that you always have your bathroom right there with you <laughs> if you if you need it. So there's no you know stopping and rushing to the restroom when you're on the road. Um, planning ahead is really important. My husband mentioned to me that they sold 330,000 RVs in the United States last year. So you used to be able to go out to a park and just you know get a spot to park for the night. Now you have to make reservations ahead of time. So it, it's helpful to plan ahead. Um, it the it, there's it's tight quarters and you just have to just plan for that and learn how to sidle sideways just maneuver through the a van type situation and then the ground's not always level so that's really important to make sure that you're very careful about how you're walking because tripping is a big deal and um those are the basic ones plan I, you know I, I guess i'm a planner because i keep using that word but um doing planning ahead making sure you have the things that you need and and as jan said pack light you don't want you don't need a lot of stuff if i might add a kind of sensitive subject here you mentioned you always know where the bathroom is when you've yeah. got to be because that's you know i can get caught so easily and feel like i have to go right now um oh. i have ordered on amazon they're like disposable little urinals for women but they're it's paper and it has a a towelette inside it that you take out for use afterwards. But the whole thing is disposable and it's great for an emergency. I carry one in my purse all the time. What is this called? Well, it's just a, per, a personal urinal for women. It's all awesome. plastic, really, but it's totally disposable. They're really helpful for when you're traveling in, in a foreign country where there's not a bathroom very readily available. I know my my wife has done that in the past and, and my daughter even and uh they they had those when like when they were touring china a few years ago and it really it, it totally helps i know exactly what you're talking about it takes a lot of stress off of you if you know you have an mm -hmm. out you have an emergency 
you know. Right. We never miss a chance to go yeah. to the bathroom. I'll never go anywhere that I don't locate the bathroom first thing. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Because you don't want to see Yeah. You know, and be, be conscious of others too. Like, excuse me, pardon me. Do you remember the Bugs Bunny where he's walking over people in the movie theater? Yeah. That was one of the tricks we did in our, in our Parkinson's boot camp. you know, also teaching people how to get up when they fall and how to get out of bed and so on and so forth. But that thing where we have to cross over people is really dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. So, sit by yeah. the door, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So one, of, one of the big plugs I, I put in for exercise in general is um, not only does it help mitigate your symptomatic or your symptoms rather uh most exercises boxing cycling indoor cycling that type of stuff but it also helps you stay in in, in better shape or at least some form of better shape and i i tell that my uh, cycling class we do we do this for two reasons one to mitigate the effects of our symptoms but also to stay in a little bit better health because uh when we do fall as we will someday or when we do get pneumonia or a bad cold or COVID or something along those lines, we'll have somewhat better strength to defend ourselves against that or fend that off and recover. Cause that's, that's what's, that's the kind of thing that gets us in the, in the end is something like that versus yep. Parkinson's, so to speak. So yeah, remember right. you're exercising for more than just, you know, symptomatic mitigation. And it right. can make you happy. The endorphins mm -hmm. for your mood. Right, too. right. And a socialization. Mm -hmm. It yeah. helps with your anxiety and depression yeah. and those things. So it's really, very good. Really, very good. We have to I look at it. that as our main medicine, I believe, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. To be yeah. flexible and adaptable is really what this is about. You have to have adaptation techniques with Parkinson's. You cannot be in control. There's no such thing because Parkinson's becomes the thing that's in control after a while. And we just have to work with it. Right. Some people exactly. say, I'm going to beat Parkinson's. That's like punching yourself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love the idea of it. My ego loves, I'm going to beat Parkinson's. But the truth is I have to work with it. Yeah. Have any of you heard the saying, uh, I may have Parkinson's, but Parkinson's doesn't have me. Right. Right. So. Yeah, I think to add to what you said, Heather, uh, uh, being creative too. I think uh, uh, Jan's really showed us that today. That's really cool. They're just being creative and thought, thoughtful about how, how to how to get around better and how to make things easier. So that's really cool. I applaud you guys. I have a new hack I'm working on. It's really not in a show you stage, but I have found that a regular hairpin can help me with my buttons. Oh. I, I uh, put the hairpin around the button and then I put the two ends of the hairpin through the buttonhole and just pull. And it pulls the button right into line with the buttonhole. So all I have to do is push it through. I don't have to manipulate the button to get it to the buttonhole. So mm, excellent. Try, right. It's just a, ha a hairpin. Yeah, can we get together, Jan, you and I? And I'd like to see if there's ways you can help me get my tie tied onto the end of my fly rod. <laughs> oh. I think that would be something there. I think that would be and really helpful. Maybe. I, well, I have, I have to think that my piano practice has helped with some of that. It might help with, with your fly fly rod yeah, too. I, it, it would, I'm sure it would. Yeah. And I highly recommend to singing every chance you get and Absolutely. learning how to communicate with everybody around you because people can't read our minds. That's right. When we're yeah. frozen, you know, or when we're doing something's happening or when we're not thinking clearly. I got yelled at the other day for being on the side of the road instead of the walking path because I was <laughs> sort of looking down, focused on my steps and I walked right out into traffic. So it's like people yeah. don't know what we're doing. You know, they were screaming at me like, "Get out of the road, you idiot!" <laughs> so I mean, it helps to exercise our vocal cords, and that can help with swallow down the line too. And that's yes, yep. swallowing. Yeah, very. You important. So you don't want to. Many people that. choked in a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> There's an exercise for for uh, swallowing. Do you all know mm -hmm. it about biting your tongue and then swallowing? Tell me. Yeah, there's whole programs for speech and swallow because when you time you exercise, you speak or speak loudly with intent, you're exercising those vocal cords, which makes them stronger to be able to protect your airway. Uh huh. You risk, don't risk aspiration. That's the key word, intent. Yeah. yeah. Someone Everything said yodeling. Intent. Uh -huh. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>
Parkinson's <laughs> Voice Project, yes. Mm -hmm. Jan, what is the technique that you mentioned? Is it something you could show us quickly? If you put your tongue between your teeth and bite, and then close your mouth and, and force a swallow mm -hmm. and do that 10 times. You, you can feel it working. You can feel it. it looks so yeah, good. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> 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 but you can if you really feel those swallow muscles working and you know it, it's Thank good you. yeah then that's a that's a huge that's a huge significant part of parkinson's is recognizing that it's more than just your your outwardly out, outwardly appearing muscular componentry so it, it's also the interior stuff too so it makes a big difference in, in practicing things like swallowing and, and, and singing to keep your voice vocal cords strong all, all kinds of stuff like that, big and loud, um, yeah. loud and louder, whatever. Uh -huh. voice yeah. What do we do with unusual days? For example, my purse was stolen. They took my iPhone, my DBS controller. Oh, Someone yeah. had control of my brain. Oh. Just saying, it wasn't my fault, it wasn't me. <laughs> I've got an excuse now. <laughs> but all things considered, what do we do in those cases? We don't have a phone to call someone? Hmm. What if we don't have a landline? I laid on the floor for several hours one night. Oh. I mean, what do we do? Or what do people do when they don't have a backup? Jan, do you have something on your person that you can call if you don't have your phone? And if we lose our phones, does everybody have tiles on their devices? Apple Watch, good, okay. What else? Let's keep talking about this. I want to take one idea from everybody because then we need to move move to the next session. Amy's here for so one idea for for Heather and the audience about what you do if you get in that situation. I don't carry a purse. Everything's on on in a pocket on me. So I that I wouldn't. I would hope I wouldn't get in that situation without being able to reach someone. Mm -hmm. My Apple Watch says it appears you have fallen. Mm -hmm. And it, if I don't respond in a certain time, it will call 911. Mm -hmm. But I can say, no, I'm all right, or I, I did not fall. I need an Apple Watch. And there's apps for that that can run on the phone as well. But mm -hmm. Apple Watch is really a really a great solution. That, that's mm -hmm. really optimized for that. They, they really spent a lot of effort optimizing it for um, accessibility and, and, and uh, special, special uses like that. Right. Great ideas. Thank you. Thank you all. We, we could wow. go on and we oh, could invite yeah. all sorts of ideas from the audience, which we will do, and then we'll share these ideas. And we, it looks like we, we do need to do a bit of a hackathon with <laughs> folks yeah. and, and, and uh, a shark tank for, for uh, Parkinson's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, Polly, sure. we have a list that we made for this, and we'd be happy to. I'm sure you can get that from Mel. And, and yeah, maybe. we'll share that after the after Perfect. the event. Thank cool. you all for joining us, for your ideas, sharing your creativity, and sure. your struggles. It was Appreciate fun. It. Thank you Thank all you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye everybody. <laughs>